Get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Dude, the Rhino might be back, bro. Football. There he is. 10-year NFL veteran, film breakdown connoisseur, Alex the Rhino Boone with us here. Hey, buddy. On Trenches, on Purple Daily. Oh, yeah. So we got to get Halloween. into uh, the TJ Hawkinson trade. We got to get into what kind of candy you consumed on Halloween. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff to break down for the YouTube audience from a film perspective. Let's oh. let's let's start just like kind of on a kind of somber note, not kind of like a really yeah. somber note. Yeah. Uh, the news came down. Adam Zimmer passed away unexpectedly. We don't really know much information about it. I know you. He you didn't necessarily play. For for him directly, but no. he was a coach on yeah. the 2016 team. You knew him personally, so I just want to throw the ball to you here. Yeah, no. uh, Adam Zimmer passing away at age 38. Total shame. I mean, Adam was a great guy. I, he was he played on the or he worked on the defensive side. I gave him a ton of mess, especially because his dad was Mike, and I messed around a lot. But he was a great sport. And at 38 years old, nobody should die. And I was really sad to hear that because, I mean, he was one of those guys that. <laughs> probably yelled at him a lot he took it <laughs> a lot and he really was such a cool dude about it and we talked at times and yeah i woke up this morning i was super sad i actually texted uh cordell down at the Bengals to see what happened and he was like dude we just don't know so it was a shame yeah so yeah thoughts go out to the to the zimmer family totally. just it's been a man with with mike losing his wife 15 years ago yeah. and then everything that happened with his Should job professionally that, and no and then this so um so yeah, prayers up and and thoughts and prayers out to to the Zimmer family, and then the Vikings went out and made a huge trade today at the deadline. I think there was like ten trades at the deadline today. I love that the NFL trade deadline the is just gone second. bonkers. <laughs> like the last five minutes, everyone's like, you know what? I guess we are going to be the first to do it. Do it. Do it. Go for it. Like everyone's waiting for someone else, and then Roquan Smith goes to the Ravens. Everyone's like, do it now. Make the call right now. now. Make the call. Uh, I, I, I try to figure out, are they faxing in still? Are they calling? Is it like a, a wire? Are they texting each other? How do these trades go down? But uh, TJ Hawkinson, for what turns out to be, I think it was, I don't have it in front of you, it's a, a second round pick, a third, yeah. and then the Vikings get a couple of fourths back. So yep. they, they wind up, they don't give up any Which capital. makes no sense. Makes no sense to me. What, why the compensation? Giving, yeah, why are you, like, why are you giving more picks? You know well, they're saying? getting, no, they're getting, they're just like swapping draft position, basically. So the the Vikings are giving up a two or three, and then they're getting fours back. So they're just moving out of the second, the third. Why do you need the fours? You got the one. You got the player. Well, that's what I'm saying. Get like, the every, fourths and the player. But I'm just saying, like, turn it down. I know what I'm saying for the team that's giving. There's always teams that give players and picks, and it's like the player is good enough. Why are you throwing in the picks? Like you're just giving more. I don't know. It's just like a back and forth thing. You're just gonna saying. give back the fourth round picks. Up. There's some good players in the fourth round. No, I'm not. I'm just saying for the teams that give up the players, they're giving up picks too, and it's like. You couldn't have just been like, hey, the player's good enough for these two picks. You need two picks to, along with it. You know what I'm saying? Or couldn't it just be like, how about a third rounder for Hawkinson? Why do we need all these other picks? Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, well, I get the two picks. Like, the team was, they drove a hard bargain. Hey, well, you know, we need two of them, a second and a third. And then all of a sudden, the Vikings were like, all right, cool. But in exchange, we also want two fourth rounders. And they're like, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, at, at what point do you stop it? You and then the last like, okay, the okay, we'll, we'll give you the fourth, but you give, you kick back a seven. <laughs> right. <laughs> A conditional okay. seven. All right, we'll give you a seven, but you got to <laughs> It <laughs> never kick ends. Back a bucket of football. I see this all the time, and I'm like, you gave them a player and six picks, and they gave you four <laughs> picks. And two of yours were conditional. It just did the math. At some point, someone's getting screwed, and it never ends. I love this trade. He's 25 years old. Yes. He's a six foot five. By the way, He's averaging among all tight ends in the NFL, and I don't. Th- I'm not going to put him on like the. He's not like a tier one stats. Travis Kelsey guy, but Do it. he's averaging more yards per reception than any tight end in the NFL. He's the former number eight overall pick. Teams across the league loved him, and he's been stuck. Hear me out on this. He's been for his football life, college, and the NFL. He's been stuck with that atrocious Iowa offensive system. Yeah, where they just can they can barely score eight points in a football game, and then the Detroit Lions like. I'm sorry, but that's not exactly innovative, high octane offense happening. So I feel like I think there's another level here to TJ Hawkinson's game that maybe Kevin O'Connell can tap into. And now Kirk Cousins gets 
a pair of six foot five hands to throw to in the back of the end zone number in the red zone. So I love this. What do you think about this trade? Oh, I think it's huge. Absolutely. I think it's it's number one. It's a piece down the middle of the field that's just going to cover up more eyes. You know, what I'm saying like everyone's kind of looking at Justin Jefferson right now, and Adam Thielen gets a lot of looks. But when you have somebody like you said that six foot five in the middle of the field, that I think one of the best things I like about him, and just from watching the lines, is he's a tough dude. Like he'll catch and he'll make. He'll turn, he'll run, he'll put his head down. Like that's one of the things that's going to make this so fun to watch because on one side you have Justin Jefferson who's just all over the place, right? Adam Thielen runs these great routes. Then you have this really brute physical tight end in the middle that's keeping everybody honest. And it's one of these things that's just another weapon for this offense. And at the same time, you get him to start blocking a little bit. You know, I mean, look at last week. He started running the ball a little bit more, which was super fun to watch because this and this is the kind of back and forth chess match that now you get to play with people. And if you can add a weapon, number one in the play action, that's going to help this offense, which is huge, is always down the middle. And look at the Ravens, Mark Andrews, one of the biggest play action teams. They love him. He Everybody knows half the time they're going to him. He still makes these great catches. Can TJ Hawkinson be like that? Because if you can be like that guy that they know that they're throwing you the ball and you still make the catch over two guys no matter what, then you've taken this offense to the extreme next level. Yeah. So, yeah, tell me more just how does he – because I think the, the biggest complaint about the Vikings offense has been they don't really have a deep threat that can stretch the field. I mean, Jefferson can go deep, but yeah. they don't – like Thielen's 32. He's got a leg problem now, and K.J. Osborne hasn't really shown that he can stretch the little, field. Yeah. Not that not that Hawkinson's going to be running, you know, 40-yard <laughs> go routes or anything. But right. Yeah. But how does he help you be more explosive, I guess, from an X's and O's standpoint? Well, I think he's just, like I said, when you have this six foot five gigantic tight end in the middle of the field that people now, instead of looking at being able to bracket you as Justin Jefferson or keep a safety over the top of you, now you have this guy in the middle of the field that is legit going to catch the ball and turn around and run for five yards. And that's a first down. And that's all we really need. And then all of a sudden we put him in in this play action format that I think is always great. And I don't know why. And, and I don't know what the numbers are. You know how I am. I hate stats. It's more of just uh, like when you're watching the game. But when you put him in this play-action style offense, he just seems so much more comfortable. And even this year, I don't know why. Like As much as I am excited that they spread him out at times, there are times where the ball kind of gets a little willy-nilly away from him or he'll start mm-hmm. to panic a little bit. And rightfully so. He's been hit a little bit, right? He's getting peppered a little bit every now and then. I get it. But when you talk about this play-action style, and number one, what, what drives that? Dalvin. And last week was a huge – I mean, dude, he was all over that field. He he was on a mission. Yeah, you've been saying he's cooked all year. I don't know. Now you want to, now you want to back on the <laughs> No, what did I say last right, week? Okay, okay, I want to see more Dalvin. I want to see what happens when you give it to Dalvin, and that's what happens. And what a great defense to do it against because their linebackers are like safeties, right? And so the minute you let this guy get the corner – and he looks so clean going around the corner last week. It's like another level. And all of a sudden now we're saying, hey, listen, we're going to throw a six foot five tight end in the middle of this. We're going to just pretend to give it to him. And we're going to let this guy streak down the middle of the field every time. Or he's going to run an over route every single time. He's going to give you a huge advantage. Why? Because of his size. I mean, these guys that are, I mean, what's Kittle? Probably six, three. So that two more inches, right. yeah. two more inches on Kittle. I mean, is Kelsey even six, five? I don't think so. See, he's a, he's a big guy, though. But, yeah. but that's what I'm saying. And then all of a sudden you talk about putting this guy that really, really looks good in a play action style. And maybe you teach him a couple of things like, hey, buddy, maybe we can split you out. And now we can really put defenses in a conundrum. And now we can push you all the way out to the boundary. And we can start to say, what are they going to do? How are they going to mismatch their defense? How are they going to move people around? Are they still going to continue to bring pressure when we have all these guys spread out? I mean, this is the, like. When you talk about like something, you know, this week, is he going to play? Of course he's going to play. He's probably going to play a couple plays. He's going to run down the middle a little bit, maybe run an over route, something simple. But when you talk about like next level and getting him more introduced into this type of offense, because in, in Detroit, and I love Detroit, they are what they are. They are a complete mold of their coach, right? And that's cool. But is it going to win you games? Clearly not. Like this league is so next level right now that if you're not stunning people and wowing them and making defenses sit back on their heels and go, what the hell is going on? You're not really going to win that many games because there's too many athletes everywhere. A lot of these guys can make tackles and you're asking guys to go out and block these stellar athletes for something that really doesn't make sense. And then all of a sudden you turn around and you look at this offense that the Vikings have and you say, man, start spreading people out. You start running all these wild routes. And now you've got a six foot five tight end who can run down the seam. And you say, hey, listen, 
Technically, that's all you still have to do. We're just going to split you out a little bit, and we still want you to just run all the way down there. We want everyone to be staring right at you because if they're not looking at you, they're going to be looking at Justin Jefferson. If they're not looking at him, they're going to be looking at Thielen. If they're not looking at him, they're going to be looking at KJ Osborne. Like, all of a sudden, this defense goes, okay, now we got problems. Now we have to sit back. We can do less pressure. We can't. The offensive line can sit back more and enjoy what they want to do, which is beat up the big guys. I mean, it's a big favor for everybody, and it's just a tight end position, and that's what's the craziest thing to me, like, Ten years ago, we would have been like, oh, tight end. Pfft, all right, great. Now you're like, man, imagine what you could do if you could just move him around a little bit in the offense and say, hey, maybe you get comfortable with some new routes. Maybe we have some more fun with you. Maybe we throw you out there in different positions. I think he'll be a great backup to Johnny Munt, who has uh, really played. He's, that's my guy. That's Judd's guy. That's my Scoring guy. Scoring his first career touchdown uh, on a great play design. I think like tight end, too, Irv Smith, there was always this – this is the last year of his contract. Now he's got a high ankle sprain, so he's going to be – he's on injured reserve. He's going to be out for like eight weeks. So Irv Smith, it's possible his Vikings career is just going to be over because he's is. he's not yeah. under contract anymore. And it's like the he was a second-round pick, Alabama. The idea of Irv, you you watch him in practice and you watch him when, when he catches the ball and he's, he's fast. He's a fairly large human being. And I think rightfully so, a lot of fans and the previous Vikings front office thought, God, this guy could re- – could do some damage in the passing game, but he never caught more than like 30 passes in a year. Uh, he could never stay on the field, and sometimes that's bad luck. There's nothing you, you can do about it, but at the end of the day, they basically said, all right, we, we we have a chance to do some damage this year. We can't just keep waiting on Irv Smith to be healthy and to be productive, so screw it. Let's just make a big splash move here and do it in the middle of the year. I love that they decided we're 6-1. and one. The NFC is pretty wide open, you know, like, there's only like five teams above 500. Let's go for it. Let's put some chips on the table this year, and let's not let's not be conservative and wait for a window next year. Let's do it this year. I lo- I love it, man. No, for sure, you have to love that, especially because they're they are six and one, and they're still like, listen, we can get a step better. Here's where mm-hmm. we can out start out scheming defenses. Here's where we can start putting our foot on the gas pedal, and you have to love that. I mean, look at the Rams. They I heard that they tried to trade what two first round picks for Brian Burns, like. There's some GMs that just are out there and they're constantly trying to get better. And you know that there's always going to be a big push the last day of the trade deadline because everyone's like, this is it. After this, you can't do anything. So the GMs that are out there taking these huge risks and they're like, listen, I, we need something. Let's trade for somebody. Let's get some new blood in here. Let's shake it up the system. Let's add on to what we have. Let's try to advance ourselves. I mean, you have to love this even more because playoff pictures – Guys like TJ Hawkinson are going to be a huge threat because everybody's going to be focusing on Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen and the coverages. I mean, you talk about playing a team like the Bills, who are just phenomenal on defense, right? And you get into you get into playing a Super Bowl against the Bills. They're going to be doing everything they can to shut down these two guys and Dalvin, right? Oh, and then all of a sudden, play, play, playing a Super Bowl. Listen, playing I'm a, just I'm just saying, playing a I'm Super just, Bowl against the Bills. Saying, well, how about this? They're playing them in what two weeks? Super yeah. Bowl preview in two weeks. Preview. preview and th- two and weeks. then a Super Bowl in like two months, maybe we'll see. We'll see. Uh, You're welcome. That's Bye. actually a good segue here into uh, scorenorth.com slash shop, Alex Boone. Live as of yesterday, scorenorth.com slash shop. Just one before, before I, die. I die. T-shirts I available. Victory Monday hooded sweatshirts and purple daily hooded sweatshirts and tees available at scorenorth.com slash shop if you just want the Vikings to win one before you die. Sorry. Continue. Sorry. Sorry. (laughs) No, I'm just saying, like, defenses are going to eventually be smart enough to go, hey, listen, if we can take these two guys out of the equation, we have a good enough pass rush up front. Well, we can live with what goes in the middle. Well, not when you're a six-foot-five guy running down the seam with his hand up and you're just chucking it to him. I mean, that's going to make things really hard for everybody. And all of a sudden, they got to focus back more in the middle. And then the outside becomes alive. And it's just, it's this cat and mouse constantly. And it's just going to be huge for them. I feel like we've spent years, at least I have, kind of like lamenting the fact that Kirk loves to, Kirk loves his little like tight end safety blankets, you know, like Tyler Conklin and oh yeah, you know, like older version of Kyle Rudolph and stuff. But like this is green light. This is no longer a tight end safety blanket. This is like explosive playmaking tight end guys. So you, yeah. you're telling Kirk, hey, you got carte blanche to just throw to your favorite tight end. It's great. It's no longer just like a safe throw. It's a well, it's a big chunk throw now. Here's what's so fun because like who was the tight end last year or the year they went to the Super Bowl? Tyler Higby, right? Tyler oh, Higby the Rams, was the, yeah, yeah. yeah, Tyler Higby was the Rams. Don't ask me how I know that. Tyler Higby was the Rams tight end. And there were times in that offense. And I'm not saying that TJ Hawkinson could even be like Tyler Higby because he was such a special breed of tight end. Like he was like a Wes Welker, Dallas Clark, you know, just shifty, 
you know, had the kind of the Christian McCaffrey get away from you type of thing. But there were times where they would split him. They would do this four by one. And we've talked about this before, but they would put him at the one side. Right. And then they put OBJ on the other side. And it was really just to see what are you going to do with Tyler, with Tyler Higby? Are you going to play him one on one? Because if you are, we're going to fade. And if but if you put a safety over the top, well, then we know that you don't have another the safety. The two safeties are not over the four side. You know what I'm saying? Like then we've we've exposed this side. So it's like this kind of and it was fun to watch because you would see Stafford kind of look over there. and He would just kind of like smile like there's no safety. All right, here we go. Snap. And he just throw it. And then like four plays later and you see the same formation, there'd be a safety over. Then he kind of looked to the left like, all right, now this is what we got. And it was just one of these things of like it's so simple, yet it's so creative and unique and it's so like i can beat you with just the sim- simplicity of moving a couple guys around because then all of a sudden later in the four by one you got obj on the one side and then it's like now what are you really gonna you know what i'm saying it's just it's constantly moving people around and putting people in these awkward spaces and putting people in very bad mismatches yes it's the illusion of complexity as Football. kevin o'connell would. dude imagine okay. being a middle linebacker in all this you're like wait what I want to like show you, there, we have like, there's like five or six plays that we could look at. There's one that I actually canned from the Saints game a month ago that I, I want to bring oh. back at some point. Oh, when it when it comes to just, he's using similar formations with different people in different spots to make it look more confusing than it is. But we'll get into some stuff here in a little bit. I, I do want to ask you, so this is one of the hotter starts we've seen in like the last 20, 25 years of Vikings football. Um, well, 1998, they started hot and then they just stayed hot and went 15 and one. And then they went to the NFC championship game and that whole thing. But then there's been some other Vikings teams. This is where Vikings fans have some scar tissue where they started, uh, six and oh, in 2003 with peak Randy Moss and Dante Culpepper. And they wind up going eight and eight, missing the playoffs. And then you were part of a team that, that started five and oh, yeah, we did and missed the playoffs in right, 2016. Right. But then you also were on some 49ers teams that started hot, stayed hot, and then did some damage in the playoffs. So I guess two-part question, when you start hot like this, when you start 6-1 and one or 5-0 and oh or whatever it is, um, how do you keep it going? And how do you know that it's for real? Like do, you, like in that 2016 instance, did you think, God, we're 5-0, and oh, but I don't know about this thing. Yeah, that's exactly what we thought. We okay. all knew it. Remember we lost. You knew you were frauds. Yeah. Oh, we knew we were total frauds. <laughs> we were five and zero. Oh, we went to the bye week. We were all like, "Well, that was fun. Here we go." I mean, it was. We didn't have Teddy, and we went into the first game against Tennessee, and we were like, "Dude, I think we ended up winning what thirteen to 10 Didn't Sean and, Hill start that game yeah, before Sean, Sam Bradford came in? Sean Hill was so fun to play play for him, and uh, his huddles were awesome. But. Um, <laughs> We win that game, right? And we're in the locker room. And we're all – I think we ended up running the ball a ton. And we were throwing, like, 58 protections to keep it super simple to figure out – because that was right when Teddy went down and we were still in the middle of, like, re-switching this whole game plan. And so we were in the locker room. I remember I was talking to B-Rock. And I was like, man, that was a hell of a game, wasn't it, buddy? And he was like, dude, we're going to have to win every single game like that this year. And I was like, I know. Oh. I know. I'm, I'm ready as you are. Let's do this. And he was like, dude – it's going to be a long year. I was like, I know it is. And then that next Monday we traded for Sam. And then all of a sudden it was like the gunslinger was here and we were still putting things together. But we remember that was different because we were also dropping like flies that year. Like every week we had two, three guys go on IR and it was like by week eight, we had no team and we were like, man, this is going to be ugly. And that's how we kind of knew is we were kind of fading away. But when you talk about guys, like I remember in the Niners, we started, really hot all the time it was funny because they're they were so clenched like everybody was constantly like super tight you know what i'm saying like you're just like god oh my god you can't make a joke because no one's gonna laugh and then you you, you we i think we lost like week three or four for a couple of years it was like our first loss and then it was like everybody could just relax again you're like all right we're human again here we go let's start all over you know like but it was a di- that was a different mentality team they were we were more like We'll, we'll just do whatever we got to do. And the minute we lost that game, it was like, okay, we can take a deep breath. Here we go. Let's get back to business. But there's times where you see these teams that they start, you know, hot. And that's why I always get worried about the bye week. And I was the most worried about this Arizona game because that bye week, I, and people think I'm joking. I hated bye weeks. I hated really? them. Interesting. Hated them. Hated everything about them. I hated taking time off. I hated that guys left to go do things. I hated that we couldn't sit there in meetings and watch film or, you know, just go on the field and do walkthroughs because I always felt like it just you missed a step. 
And all of a sudden it took a little bit longer to get that step back the following week. And that's why this last week against Arizona, I was really, really super excited to see that the pass rush just kept on him the entire time like they did. Because that's one of those things where you could go away in a bye week, come back and have to play a Kyler Murray, and you just completely fall apart. You know what I'm saying? But instead it was like they completely honed in on that. And it was like, man, that's – but you – Teams, will, they'll start out hot, then they hit that bye week, and it's like they miss that step, and everything catches up with them. And then all of a sudden, they're in shambles a little bit, and then they kind of recatch themselves, or they don't. But it's – I'm not saying it's bad to start out hot. I'm just saying that at times, you can feel a lot of pressure, you know, and you feel everybody breathing down on you. And, you know, when do you feel like it's real? When you're in the playoffs. I mean, it's always real. And I hate when people say that, like, oh, they haven't played anybody. Well, they didn't make their schedule. They didn't ask who they wanted to play. They just showed yeah. up and played who you asked them to play. Now, well, and this year, like, who, what's the list of teams if you're going to – I hate I hate that too. Well, they haven't played yeah. anybody. Okay. okay, okay. Submit the list of teams that would be acceptable to beat in now, this year's NFL. It's like Bills, Eagles, Chiefs, right? Philly. And we yeah. – the Vikings did play Philly, but that was early. And people are going to quickly be like, oh, there's your excuse. And I'm not saying that's an excuse. That was a learning lesson for them. Hey, don't fall asleep in Philly, right? Like they're going to smack you around. But you go forward and you say, okay, a lot of people are looking at the schedule like, oh, you know, they haven't really played a lot of people and they're going to have some tests coming up. I think, number one, the Commanders is, should be a fairly easy game for them. They should go in there and kick them in the face. I love, you know, how I feel about Heineke. I love them. Feels like a feels like a trap game to me. Feels and I like agree a, with you. I agree with you. Buffalo on the other like you side. Just, you Kirk's kept going Kyler back to Price. Washington. You kept Kyler Murray in check, and you did these great things. And the offense was rolling with Dalvin, and at times you're throwing the ball. It's like, man, this is great. And then you go over to Washington, and you're like, oh, these guys suck. Like, but I don't feel like that with this team because there are so many veterans on it. You know what I'm saying? Daniel Hunter, Zadaria Smith. You have Harrison Smith in the backfield. You got Kendricks in the middle. You got Kirk. You have guys like Brian O'Neill. You have guys like Adam Thielen. TJ Hawkinson, who's not a rookie. He's also a veteran. You know what I'm saying? You have Dalvin, guys like that. So I don't feel like this is the game. But you look at that Bills game, and that's another thing that could fall you into a trap game is you look ahead too far. You know what I'm saying? Like you're like, hey, listen, we just, this is light week. We're going to take care of these guys, right? He's going to. We're going to take care of these guys. And then we're going to play for real, right? Like, yeah. that's that's sometimes how you fall in trap game. But <clears throat> you talk about that Bills game. That's going to be one of those games to see. For can, everybody, we, can we flex that game, please? You know I think there's a, there's like a chart. Is it the Chargers-Niners, I think, is the Sunday night game that week? And I get it. That's like I'm L.A. and San Justin Francisco. Herbert. I don't want to see that kid anymore. I, I want to see. They'll probably try to flex it because that's going to be a super fun game. Oh, come on. Dun, 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 dun. Dude. Kirk Cousins in prime time. I'm telling you, dude. Oh, maybe we don't want him to flex it. Maybe Actually, it's true. Let's keep it, at, keep it at noon. Keep it Chris at noon. Ma- We're Chris good. Myers, Mark Slareth. Yeah. Right? Charles Davis. <laughs> I really like this guy over here. Dude, Slareth. Mark, Mark Sanchez. You know, bring him on. Color commentator. Let's go. Mark Slareth's the best. I'd never hear that guy. Well, I don't even really – I can't listen to these guys anymore. They say things that are so stupid sometimes, and I just mute it. I'm like, God, I can't even. And plus, I just watch the 20, all 22 at night. Speaking of. Should we dive into some right now? Dude, hit Should me. we get it? Hit okay. Me. All right. This is, if you're listening on the podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever, this is where I recommend you pause it and you move over to the YouTube version. We're like 25 minutes in here. And this is down and dirty, man. I'm just going to pop this up on my screen. Um, hey, let's... by the way, before we do this, can I just give a massive shout out, number one, to Pat P., Yes. For not putting up with Cliff Kingsbury shit. Like, dude, the first play they threw at him, and Pat P kind of stood up, and you know Cliff Kingsbury said something to him because Pat P was hot. I mean, dude, bravo, my dude. Way to show up. And also, I got to give a huge shout-out to my dude, Gabe Poster, um, one of the quarterback for my football team. He did a big report today on his favorite player, and apparently it was me and his mom said to another dude. Like, oh, oh, wow. Right oh, bro. That's great to hear. It really is. I love this kid. Yeah. It's my guy. How much did you pay him to say that in the report? No, I swear to God. He's like, man. <laughs> and then, you know who? So check this out. He In this little video, he's like, you know, I, I had to give it to uh, Coach Boone, you know, because he's my coach. He's like, but it's a close second for Dalvin Cook. I was like, dude, anytime you get put with Dalvin Cook, you know 
you know you're doing something right. If he would have said Frank Gore, I would have known he was just sucking up to you. Right. But, uh, That's when I would have known. Understand. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so, all right. You uh, you texted me the other day and said, let's get some Zadarius Smith sack tape here. I love these. I so love these. this is this is the first sack. And we also have the sort of the, the end zone view here too. But I'm going to roll this. Yeah. So just for the audience here, this is Zadarius Smith right here before the mm-hmm. snap, as you'll see. And I'm going to roll this, and you just tell me uh, tell me what's one, happening. I don't know if we talked last week, but if I, if you're going after these guys, it's the interior of the court. And I think we talked about that. Their you want to go after the interior of the of, of the Cardinals? Cardinals. Yeah, okay. we're, it's going to be – so their right guard should be uh, Hernandez. That used to be the first-round pick for the Giants. Their center is Billy Price, who used to be the first-round pick for the Cincinnati Bengals a while back. And their left guard is Cody Ford, who was the first-round pick for Buffalo. Yeah. You're back. And I actually used to be a huge Cody Ford fan. Great, tough player. And moving him in, I thought was a great move. But this year, these three don't seem like they've gotten it together well. Uh, the left tackle, DJ Humphreys, that's my dude, DJ Hump. And the right tackle is Calvin Beecham. He was also one that got exposed, which I hope we can talk about later. But You didn't play for Kingsbury, did you? No, I played for the other one, the one that shall not be named. Uh, Arians? Yeah. Okay. I'm All sure right. he, he's enjoying some some cocktails and a, and a sure fat buyout is. right now on the mm-hmm. beaches of Tampa. So mm-hmm. first thing, dumb question I notice here, you've got right right here, bottom of the screen, um, you got Zadarius Smith just kind of moving right to the inside here. And is this 98? Is this DJ Wanham here? Yeah, Let's it looks like it's here. Wanham. So okay. look. Look how wide he's getting here, dude. Look at this. Almost kind of like he's going into coverage, right? Yeah. He's just kind of messing with everybody. What's he doing? What's he doing? You guys, so now look, see how wide everybody is. See how it's positive. See look how at you, this. I mean, this is see, like. Right. They're out there. And a lot of what that is, and not so much on the right, like he kind of looks like he's just a little bit of a wide three, but on the left over here. And what guys have been starting to do in the last, like, I don't know, eight years, it's kind of been a trend. They start to push these D tackles out wider. And what it does is it causes these guards into more space and it forces them to become tackles. And that's why these guys are winning on the inside. Like Zadarius is crushing guards because they're not used to blocking guys like him with such space. So right here, we walk up, we got a 5-0 clearly. And what they're doing with Kendricks is they're drawing the center. So if Kendricks were to take back, let's say half a step back, he would not have broken the heels of the three technique, right? That's when you start to declare guys up. If they cross the heels of the defensive tackle, he's now considered an okay, up player. So right here, now, so this when you say five zero, you're talking right Those five here. right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So see how Billy Price is going to go back the center, and Kendricks isn't going anywhere. He's really reading the back, but it pulls Billy. See how it kind of pulls him for a second, and then it puts that guard right there, Cody Ford. Mm-hmm. He's kind of in a bind right there because he's like, is he coming? Is he not coming? I need to feel the bump. I need to everything. Keep going a little bit. From here, he doesn't really get a good push. He doesn't get a good hit on Zadarius. Now, look what Zadarius does. I would say it doesn't look like he gets any any. No, he doesn't get anything on him. And and this is because, look, if you go back, it's because I would just give a little big giant question mark here, actually. Right? Like, we don't know what you're doing, Cody. But what happens is because Billy has to check Kendricks, he kind of gets over there a little bit late. And then he doesn't get good position. And then look what Zadarius does. Look at his feet right there. (laughs) Puts him on skates, dude. Oh, man. Just super easy. This is what you call leverage, kids, right here. Billy Price is uh, not no joke. He's like 6'1", too. And Zadarius is underneath him, driving him back. Now, look at the problem is, too. Look at your tackles. See how we talked? They talked about that cage rush earlier. This is the cage rush. You send two guys around the edge, and you tell them no matter what, you have to rush around the edge, and he cannot leave the pocket. And then you put Zadarius on a line drive right to the center. But you make the center kind of hesitate at first, and this is what happens. Wow! So you've kind of wall you're 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 walling off the escape routes from Correct. left to right, and you're hoping gonna... that Zadarius can get through the the center and the guard. Correct. Yeah. And if he doesn't, you have another tackle on the other side, who I think was Phillips. I'm not. Sure. Give you this view too. There we go. See, so this, this is even how... look how wide this is, man. This is just. See, I mean, see where look 55 at, is. Look at this. That's what I'm saying. They make you turn these guards into tackles, and that's why these guys lose so much. They're not used to all this space. Guards are used to this space on the right, and even that's why. Look at that. He's covering up the tackle, and see how he's tilted in? 
used to call that an obstacle illusion. Right here, Itaimo? Yeah. yeah. See how he's tilted in like that? Mm-hmm. It's really, you're going to take like, because he's tilted in, he's kind of hurting himself. If he were to go more at the tackle, he would get this guard to open up a lot faster. See mm-hmm. now right there? See how he's trying to like, see how his hips, the guard's hips open? Right Yeah. He doesn't know what's going on. This is a beautiful, beautiful pass rush. The poor, the poor center. I mean, this is one where you go back. If you're watching, if you're in the film room, you're like, dude, really? You let's let get, this, let's do the second Zadarius one here. This is the second Zadarius sack. Oh, man. And let's go right There's to. There's so many, I'm forgetting them. I'm he had a third one time. that was kind of uh, Kyler Landing Murray like game. fumbled. And... Yeah. So I'll roll this. You tell me what you want to. All right. So number one. We're looking at this, and obviously we're counting 55 is down, right? So we have an overload to the right. So we're basically turning. In a normal protection, you would turn everybody to the right because you're not going to put – it looks like it's Harrison's – who's that at the top? Uh, this is – is that – Go to the end zone view. Here, let's get up here. Okay. End zone view always helps you much better. All right, so it's Hicks. Okay. All right. Hicks is a known rusher. So once again, you'd have to say – Technically here, you would say, depending on the offense, you'd say Ram. You'd shut it down at 55. Or you would just point to 55 and say down. And now you know you're 5-0 across the board. And you would you would point to 58 and say, I don't know, lucky to let the left tackle know you have him. Right? So now you're technically 5-0 across the board. And that's why they would just go simply, hey, this week, if we see 58 up and 55 55- creeping around the middle, we are instantly 5-0 because it saves everybody from going, he's down, lucky him, nobody can hear anything, and everyone's freaking out, right? Like, instead, everyone's like, just just throw your hand up. They'll figure it out, but we'll, we, we'll live to fight another day. So here, once again, where are they putting Zedarius at? Right on the center, man. Dude, look I'm telling that. you, these guys, they let you know who they're mad at. <laughs> they and let you is, know who they're picking up. Look And look at this. So right here, you've got – so there's hat on Number hat one. on hat here, right? you got yep. – these well, guys 58's are coming chip for? in the tight end. But, yep. yeah, you got a hat on a hat, right? Now, look, the center's clearly leaning because he's freaking out in his shoes. <laughs> freaking <laughs> out. Why? Because centers are not pass blockers. They are like the master chessmen. They get you in great oh, position. Now, look. Look, look what at, happens when you He's coming across his face. Look at this. Look oh, what happens when you God. lean. You drop your back foot. See that left foot right there that stops? When your hand stops, your foot stops, and it causes you to turn open. Now, watch. He's going to turn open, right? there oh you're welcome dude happens every time why because you didn't sit back and punch him this is billy's own fault this is right run right down the middle of him to what extent is this brilliant defensive play design here versus just maybe a misprotection because like when i look at this okay because but so then even more bravo to ed donatel and the vikings defense because what you have here is zadaria smith is healthy which means he is one of the most ferocious 250-pound machine pass rushers in the league. Yeah. He's leading the NFL in sacks. He's back to his old form. And uh, and they have him essentially, like we talk all the time about, man, if you could get Justin Jefferson on a linebacker, it's just an athletic mismatch. Right. This is an incredible one-on-one athletic mismatch. Zadarius Smith on a center. But <laughs> one-on-one, right? It's not really that much of a like crazy mismatch because that's what everyone does now, and they've been doing it for a long time. You can always find out who the team's picking on by where they put their pass rushers. Now, look, Daniil Hunter played most of the game over Calvin Beecham because they were picking on Calvin too, right? Mm-hmm. He's not one of the best. He's a good tackle. He's not one of the best. I think Daniil had two sacks too. Uh, two, he had a couple pressures. I don't think he had any sacks. I thought he had a uh, – he was right. in the mix. He, he had like four pressures. He might have had a knockdown. Tyler was all over the we place. That's why, yeah, exactly. But when you put this known pass rusher over a guy who's not really used to doing stuff like this, you put him in a bad bind. If I were this team, I would have been like, we need to slide this down. Because Billy Price is clearly not ready to handle Sedarius Smith. Yeah, so when you say game. slide this down... I would which, so which guard is supposed to be? So you take well, you'd have to slide to Neil too. So you'd have to give me you'd make it like a a Ray call. You could make it a Roger. You could make it a, a, you know a lot of things. R. You could just say R. R meant go right. <laughs> What's the running back supposed to be doing here? Well, here, right here, since they're five zero, he's checking Kendricks. 
to his near safety over here. See how he's looking across the field at Kendricks? Yeah. And so then he's... once he sees him drop, he probably has four strong and four weak because it looks like he looks out even farther. So he's got this uh, corner or the nickel, and then he's out on his route, which is right. And, but, then, and then Hicks drops back into coverage to cover no, the running back here. Here's so he can't, what's even, also, he can't even throw a swing pass. And I'm glad you said that because this is the last thing I wanted to touch on. Here's what's also great. See how initially you have, and this isn't DJ Hump. This was his backup. I forgot DJ didn't play, but his backup. See how he initially sets out on 58? 58 has no intention of rushing. He's just there to, to mush the tight end and then get back into coverage. But you've pulled a guy out of a protection that yes. doesn't even need to go. See, that's why everybody's on a one-on-one, but only four guys rush. Because, look, yeah. 72 right here should have known clearly he should have seen 58 hitting the tight end should have seen Phillips running outside like this and should have came back as fast as he could because where's your big problem dude it's not this big 97 right here this guy's not a known pass rusher i'm here to stop the run it's this guy over the middle you're it see this is a problem that most people have like dude hicks is dropped he's gone and 72 is like yeah I don't know what's going on. My center's <laughs> getting crushed, and I'm just like, I'm chilling, bro. I'm voiding space. Dude, you have to – this is what separates really, really good alignment from bad ones. Look at this. Dude even flashes. Is this flasher? is it, but this is like – this is a ton to process in a short amount of time, but it sounds like what you're saying is because Harrison Phillips, not that he can't get after a quarterback, but 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 if you're if you're ser- if you're surveying this, <laughs> who's the who are the of these two guys who are sort of within your jurisdiction, right? Right. You're saying the known pass rusher to fear is Zadarius Smith. Yeah. So you have to be on high alert for him coming into your into your uh circle of trust here. Yeah, it's almost like the offense has to call the defense's bluff. Like had the, and it, you don't know where it goes because not a lot of teams will do this. But if I were an OC, I would call their bluff. I'd be like, I want to slide this down. Why? Yeah. Because I'm not stupid. I'm not going to put my center at risk here. Why? Because he's the closest guy to the quarterback. So we're going to go R. We're going to put our running back on 58. It's going to turn to a true slide, like college style. But it doesn't matter. I called your bluff. And I got two guys on my best pass rusher. And I got a little bit of slide over to Daniil at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Because when you start sliding guys over, things kind of get mushed up. Everybody kind of starts rushing into the same gaps and it becomes a big cluster. And that's why we used to love doing it, but not a lot of people do it because like I said before, and remember, this gets really complicated. If you slide everybody down, you keep your back in. So you got to pick your poison. You're either going 5-0 and you're getting your back out or you're sliding and you're keeping your back in. Dude, this is uh football. Oh. Oh. It's that Halloween candy, dude. It's got me mm. jacked, bro. I told you I was on one today. I was what, ready to uh, go. what are mm. your what's what are your Halloween candy power rankings? What's dude, your what's Sour your Patch three? Kids number one? Really, really, no question. Oh no wow, question. Oh, bro, Sour Patch Twizzlers, no question. Okay, one and two. After that, Reese's, and after that, I'll take a pie. You know, maybe I'm late to the party on this. I was telling Judd this the other day in Declan, but my wife and I went down to the gas station. We had a little, little about three weeks ago. I had a hankering for some. Just a little, uh, some sweets, right? So we walked down the street to a close by gas station. You know, they have Reese's peanut butter cups now with like crumpled up ruffled chips inside of them. How amazing was it? That's innovation. It was so good. The first time I had one, <laughs> I felt like I was cheating on myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheating on my cheat day. I thought oh kidding, I God. ate one and I was like, I need to go work out right now. <laughs> oh, just ridiculous. Uh, I'm more of an old school, old school baby Ruth candy bar kind of a guy. I you give you, me, Grandpa. give totally. me some old school. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it works well bar. with my with my stomach. Yeah, <laughs> under <laughs> grand bar. <laughs> um, okay, on the on the flip side here, so Ed Ingram has, I think Ed Ingram has a lot of potential. You would know a thousand times more than I would. He's been yeah. struggling in this game. It was. Uh, him versus JJ Watt on a few islands. And so this was uh I'm going to I'm going to roll this for you and you just tell me how we can make Ed Ingram a little bit better each week at a time here, okay? Right. So look, remember, just keep it paused for a second. Mm-hmm. Is this the back end zone? This is so this is actually the t- we don't have the all 22 on this. This oh, okay. is just the TV footage here. So right. we got to So we can't see, you can't see it here, but you can tell JJ Watt's super wide, right? It seems being a common theme and people like don't want to address it. And I don't know why they're going to continue to do it until you stop it. 
they're just forcing these guys that fight in these small, small spaces to not work in a lot of space. And they're like, let's see if you can cover as much space as your tackle can. Because J.J. Watt could easily kick out to defensive end. And uh, 44, um, don't tell me. Um, let see his face. His teammate. I can't think of his name, though. Um, Marcus Golden. Okay. He, he uh, He's another one. You put these two guys over here as a – Offensive lineman, my first thing is get off the ball. Why? Because space – well, and it's different too for me because I was a tackle, right? So moving me in when soon as they – and they started doing this back in the day with guys like Michael Bennett. And all of a sudden, like, guards didn't know what to do. And I was just like, man, this is great. It's like being back home again. But it's like you could tell that like, these shorter guys didn't like it. And it's basically like, hey, if you see these two guys over here, clearly something's up. But at the same time, get off the ball. If you create space – and time, you can figure out what's going on around you. Is that More, why Ezra Cleveland's been pretty good at guard? Because he's got he's like six foot six with just dude, ridiculous arms, and he uses his hands really well. I mean, yes, and I think surprisingly, a lot of tackles and tall guys move in and they play well because they have so much more advantage. Because while yes, most guards aren't good at moving in space. Most of these D tackles aren't good when you have an answer for them. Because then all of a sudden they're like, oh boy. Well, I'm not really here to stop the run. I'm more here to stop the pass. Yeah. If I can't do that, you know, and that's when you start turning around and you're like, hey, listen, they got a lot of speed rushers out there. Why don't we start running the ball a little bit at them? And then all of a sudden you start putting more guys in a bind. But, yes, here, they're wider. Get off the ball. I'm thinking twist. What, what is that going to help me do? Throw my GD hands, right? Like, as soon as he gets into me, I'm throwing my hands as hard as I can to figure out where he's going because you're going to ricochet him some way. If he's heading out to the tackle, as soon as you hit him, he's going to fly out there. But if he's just setting you up for something else, dude, put your hands on him. Shut yeah. down that fight. Let's see what happens. All right. So, well, let's see what happens here. Look out, Kirk. <laughs> right. Catch All right. Yourself. So, it's a shotgun snap. Number one, and, you're sliding uh, left. That's a bad idea. Why? Your two known pass rushers are to the right. I don't care who's to the left. There is no immediate threat that these two guys to the left cannot handle. Okay. So, again, you're identifying that these two guys <laughs> are more ferocious pass rushers than these two guys. And so... I'll because you of that, you should be sliding Bradbury to the right, not to the left, right? I know who the I know who the left defensive tackle is. I don't know who the left end is, but if you can tell me who that left defensive end is without looking it up, I'll give you a hundred bucks. Yeah, I can't. My point exactly. Yeah. Who's to the right? JJ Watt. Enough said, right? Yeah. <laughs> Enough said, guys. I don't and, need to say the answer. And also, like Christian Darisaw is just straight up one of the best offensive tackles in the NFL the now. Bowl. He's gonna make the Pro Bowl for sure. And He's I'm gonna incredible. tell you right now. Ezra Cleveland might slip in just He's, because yes. the two of them are playing really, really well. But that's another thing. Like some games we would go in and say, hey, listen, <clears throat> you guys are screwed. We're not going to slide your way. You need to figure it out. Be tough. Do what you got to do. There is a problem right there about the bull rush, your right guard. Look at him. Right? Look at J.J. And Watson. You're, you're, but but you're, <laughs> you're laughing, and this is driving me nuts because I'm looking at Bradbury when I'm like, dude, you should be going to the right. You should be going to the right to collapse this dude's lung. Whose like, job is it to make sure Bradbury slides to the right instead of the left here? Ultimately, it would fall on KOC, right? Like, KOC has to have the ultimate come down and say, hey, no matter what, we see these two dudes over here. Just because of this reason of we don't want to get in trouble with the right guard, we're going to put you over here. And we'd normally, you'd be like, fine, look, there's nothing coming to the left. Like, you get, we used to do it all the time. Hey, we're going to slide to this guy this week. And, yeah, it used to piss me off at times, but you were like, whatever, dude. That's what they want to do. It's what they want to do. But go back here. Ooh. <laughs> that's not go a ahead. good position to be in. All no, right. it's not. <coughs> all right. Need so a look. smoke? Need a smoke over there? Oh, God. <laughs> Drugs was at the hospital yesterday. All right. Go back a little bit. Let's, let's see it from uh, his stance. Take it from right there. Okay. All right, let's see here. We get a good kick. We getting a good kick. Let me see. What's a kick mean? A good drive. Drive catch. You know, it's like when you're pass pro. This is called pass proing. You're you're kicking out of your stance. Number one, he's coming up out of his stance. Driving me nuts, kiddo. See how he's, he's getting he's a little too higher. Up, he's too see, oh, as here. he's getting farther back, he's coming up taller. See right there. Stop. He's committed. Dude, <laughs> you're as committed as committed can be. His head is down. He's not even really looking at you, and he's getting ready to drop everything into you. This is the textbook, TJ or JJ Watt. 
textbook. I'm one step and I'm coming right down your grill. Look how low he gets. This is the moment where you stop. See, but now here's the problem. Go back. See how his feet are still moving? He's got happy feet. He should set, go one, two, set one more time, one, two, stop and throw your hands now. But his feet are moving. And when your feet move, you have no power with your mm. hands. See how high he is, too? You can see him getting ready to brace. See, the foot's not all the way down yet. It's still kicking. And sometimes this happens. And I'm not a doctor, but I'm smart enough to know that your body will put you in a better position naturally than you think it will. So even if you, like, this could be just him, like, he could be like, dude, I thought both my feet are in the ground. But he's trying to drop because, look, JJ's inside. See, he's inside of his frame. You can see, uh, you can see Ed's hand right there. That white, yeah, yeah. That white flash is his hand. And see how it's on his shoulder the whole time, right there. JJ's just, yeah. How I'm fixable? How fixable is this stuff with that Ingram on the fly? I mean, we're in the middle of a season here, and Dude, they're I'll six and one. It's hard. You know? It's hard because you can practice a million reps a day, but until I physically put JJ Watt across from you, I don't know what you're going to do. And that's why sometimes when I train these guys, I'm like, listen, I try to train them for super chaotic moments. Like this is going to be a total chaotic moment. And I need you to be really calm. You know, and I, I, I love the fact that he just, just, he just kind of at the end of the play, just lays down on JJ Watt. Here. Yeah, he might don't as well do that. Le- lean don't on his knees a little bit here though. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> this is that right is here, man. This, Dude, this is that, just, perfect that form. Is... I don't even know what to say to that. Look at the umpire. He's like, oh, God. All right, guys. Get up. Get up. What is happening down here? Oh, not Brian, quite sure. Oh, why, is, why is Ingram just laying down on J.J. Right. Watt, who's on top of Kirk Cousins? That's not good. So you there's a few, few plays like this. A few plays when like this. Don't me. help up the quarterback after you give up a sack. Drives me nuts. Yeah. But this also, too, like, because I know that people have asked, like, Shouldn't Kirk have gotten rid of the ball? You're like, dude, sometimes these things happen so fast. Like, if you were to play this in real time, it's like catch ball, one, two, you're sacked. Um, I'm trying to – I want to do one more play with you here. So you can either do – do you want to do uh, – which which big Dalvin play do you want? Do you want to do the the jet sweep motion, uh, fake handoff, I think, to Jalen Rager, touchdown, or do you want to do the the 30-yard pitch play where Garrett Bradbury got called for taunting afterwards? Yeah, by the way, that was hilarious. Don't call um, that. Quit calling taunting in the NFL, for God's sakes. Dude, leave these guys alone. Now, this one was – I mean, this as fun as this was to watch, kind of knew it was coming. What, the pitch? Yeah, just because, like, there's nobody over here. Look at 52. He doesn't even realize – and this this made me and my oldest laugh so hard because 52 doesn't realize that they pitched the ball for a good two <laughs> seconds. I'm not even kidding you. He just stands there. Look at him. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We were dying. We were dying. I was like, Johnny, he doesn't even know. That's some like high school shit. I didn't. I didn't even. I didn't even see it, Coach. I didn't even. See, it's like something you would tell your high school coach. You're like, it's okay. It's okay, buddy. Let's see you next time. Dal- then Dalvin's gone. And basically, I think this is Johnny Munt getting out here on this block. It's basically Dalvin Cook with one defender. Dude, Johnny Munt hat on hat, and then good luck. Buddha Baker with the save. But is a good, he's a good player too, but he t- hey he hit Dalvin and you could see he was shaking his head. He was like that hurt. Yeah. <laughs> that um, made me laugh. Let's then there's the another. One. Let's get to the other one here because so th- they've been setting these up all year in the red zone. And again, this is just my my amateur football fan mind here, but I love once they get inside the ten yard line. I love how they use the jet sweep as sort of hey we could hand it off. We could run jet sweep motion with Jefferson. With Jalen Rager, with Adam Thielen, we could hand it off to them. We could fake it, give it to Dalvin, could fake to both, throw a pass to Johnny Munt for a touchdown. It's, it's again, it's the illusion of complexity. Right. It's the same thing, but they can do six different things out of it. So this is the TV footage here. They do have some all 22 on the back half of this, so it's not going to be perfect. But, um, Talking but, about this is amazing. Okay. So we got a second and goal here from the, from like the four and a half, five-yard line. And this is Jalen Rager in motion. That might have been a that may have been a false start there actually by Irv Smith right there. That's a false start for sure. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. That's 
or it's either a false start or it's a, or it's two guys. It's in motion. definitely a false start because it's two guys in motion. If it's not, yeah. And so, what happens here? How does the how here's, does the the motion? Here's what I love about this. It's so the motion, and you talked about the complexity of being simple, like just moving Jalen Rager. And I'm not saying Jalen Rager is the best because I think that he could be more involved, but. He's fast, though. You have to account for him in these situations. There's no question, but I still think that as a defense, you're kind of looking like, is this guy really going to beat us? I don't know. Maybe you will. But what's great about it is you have two crossing bodies, which in turn, if you look at the linebackers, they're kind of looking, both of them, and it's hard to say from this because we're not looking from the back end, but both those linebackers, one and two, yeah. As soon as these two guys cross, they're looking in the backfield like, what is going on? One's looking to the right, one's looking to the left. You see complete pandemonium and then once again it's super simple because irv smith they're telling him listen all we want you to do is yeah you keep going because that was actually gonna be a perfect view they just tell him listen you cut that defensive end if he starts to crash down you just cut him and you let the wash of the offensive line take the running back in just like this there you go see how the offensive line is continuing to wash everybody down and irv Mm -hmm. smith becomes like the knife that comes back and cuts it it's super fun because it's it's like a Y hide, and they don't see you coming. And if you're really diabolical, you actually cut them. Look but- at Derisaw here, too. Just mauling. Good luck. Yeah, that's beautiful. Brings a tear to my eye. Dude, it's so fun. So fun to watch this stuff. Mm. And it's a simple zone. Like, up front, you're running simple five-man box zone. You don't, right. and it's it's super simple to ID. Like it's it's just friendly for everybody because they're like just find the mic, yeah. and then you guys have those two linebackers. That's it, and you're like, ah, oh, great. I'm down in the red zone. Things are crazy. Boy, right, that was a stupid, fun question, dude. I swear to God, <laughs> you better hit me. All right, here's my dumb football question of the week here <sighs> to wrap up. Uh, Can we do two of them? Trenches. Well, let's start with one. Up. Let's start with one and see what happens. Okay. All right, let's start with one. How many players? How do I phrase this? How many players, like, in the last 10, 15 years, <coughs> or, or whatever, how many players make or made enough money to fly private in their personal travel? What percentage of the league flies private in their personal travel? What percent does and what percent has the ability to? Yeah. Okay. Like, Which Russell is- Wilson's always on a private jet. Right. Is, Brian, is Brian O'Neill? Is like where's the cutoff to where you know guys are just not sitting middle seat on a on a delta plane anymore the rest of their lives? I know? mean, I think that probably twenty five percent of the league probably flies private, like, like for the for like multiple times a year for personal travel, not just like once for fun to Vegas or something. Yeah, I know a lot of guys that are in that like private program. How many should be in it? Probably five percent. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, guys, if you can't really walk through a security thing and be like, yeah, I'll take my shoes off. I don't really know what's going on. I, I mean, it's funny because everyone, like, you know, the guys would talk about going to Vegas and stuff. And I guess you could count that because, like, they pile, like, 15 dudes into a plane and go to Vegas and stuff. But you're like, dude, you spend so much money. To be, dude, it's so convenient. Though. You just get right on and you get right off. It's kind of like a real plane. You like for right quarterbacks, off. I mean, like Kirk Cousins. Oh, he's, a little, he's a little thrifty, though. Kirk Cousins is a little thrifty. buy his own plane. If you're making over $150 million, you can buy your own damn plane. Yeah. yeah. that's uh, We did this on a, on a golf podcast. We used to have uh, 10,000 swings. We said, let's go through the world golf rankings. And you guys you guys were pretty plugged into the golf scene. Yeah. So we're, let's go through the list. Like Phil Mickelson flies private. But, like, once we get down to Kevin Na, does Kevin Na fly private? Does, uh, you know, once we get to, like, yeah. the 52nd golf in the world. So... I always wonder, like, I don't, you know, if you're, if you're, especially All if you're right, like a 300-pound lineman, you're I not going to sit and. No, God, no. If you ever get caught on a private plane, unless you're going somewhere with a group of guys, then you're totally cool. But if you're like, yeah, me and the wife took the kids down to Cabo, we flew private. We're going to be like, what? Are you an idiot? <laughs> God, that damn point, fat boy. Um, here's the cutoff. Ready? Dak Prescott. I think he makes like $140 million, right? Yeah. So anybody below that should not be flying private. Okay. Hold on. NFL QB contracts. Let's pull this oh, up. Boy. Let's find go. the actual cutoff. I mean, Dak makes too. like $40 million a year. But I so, think his whole deal was 140 Ryan Tannehill. Okay. Ryan Tannehill makes 
$29.5 million a year. Does Ryan Tannehill fly private? Yeah. $30 million a year? Yeah. M- Marcus Mariota, no. $9.5 million a year. No. He's flying, he's flying a Comfort Plus. He's, but he's on the upgrade list. He's on the first class upgrade for list. He's, sure. And he's one of the first three. For sure on the upgrade okay. list. Okay. All right. You know, so we, we found the line. Charter charter the Mar- Marcus Mariota is the line. That's the. Have that's you ever the line. seen how much it costs to fly from here to Vegas? I think it's like 30 grand. That's just huh. one way. Yeah. Well, if you make $30 million a year, then you probably just budget for that, you know, 10 times a year. You know? What else are you going to do? Are you going to buy another car? That's I've, I've always wondered that too. You know I don't need right? nine cars. I'd rather I'd rather have like a private jet and a chef before I'd buy another car if I'm one of these guys. Sure, get a chef. Or I'd take <laughs> myself to culinary school before. You could do that too. I yeah. want to. Jared yeah. Allen did that. Um okay, this is from a listener here. Do it. Dumb football question. Why are some offensive linemen great run blockers, but not great pass blockers, and vice versa? Oh, that's easy. Uh, Because a lot of it is because of their style. Uh, A lot of guys are considered finesse players, like uh, like uh, you know Joe Staley was considered like a finesse player. Like he was really good with his feet. You know what I'm saying? Like he never. And I used to like kind of think about it like this: a finesse player could turn a power rush into a speed rush. Like they're smart enough and good enough with their hands and feet that no matter how you hit them, they're going to be in great position. You know what I'm saying? But then you have a guy like Trent Williams, who's like the complete feet and hands guy. Like he's always in great technique. He he how he gets there is shitty as hell. And he'll even tell you that. Like we've talked, and I've been like, dude, I don't even know how you do it half times up for me either. But he just can't get himself in a great position. But then you look at what he used to do in the run game. Like, dude, remember that clip of him crushing that linebacker? Like he's like that hybrid. And then you talk about like the old school guys that were like mauling tackles like I'm trying to think you know Runyon but Runyon was a good pass blocker you know he used to go against Michael Strahan um Ogden those guys were power guys I mean they're just I think the thing that separates a power guy from a finesse guy and they call them more maulers in the NFL is like you know your the guys that are good run blockers is their feet and how well they can move their feet you know a lot of guys that are good at run game back in the day weren't didn't have good feet they just be and that was too because the D tackles that they played were so big and they didn't have a lot of moves. You know, everyone was just bull rushing you. So you just take one kick, sit there, guy bull rush, you throw your hands, you just kind of fight it out. Now you have these guys that are so fast and they're all over the place. And just like we just saw defensive coordinators are going, Hey, listen, here's the problem. Let's send our best guy after him. Who cares? Like, we're just going to go, you know, and that's why these guys now in the NFL the offensive linemen, they have to do both. You have to be a great run blocker. Dude, there's nothing worse than an offensive lineman that's not a good run blocker. Like, at some point, you turn around, you're like, well, what are you good at? Are you, you're not even an offensive lineman at that point. You might as well call yourself a tight end. Yeah. Isn't Please. that kind of, I mean, I think the Bills are going to be favorites in two weeks for sure, but the Bills aren't a great running team. No. So you can kind of, again, but be careful what I wish for here. You can't do the Bills because they're another one. Their offense from Brian Dabble last year. I was super excited about their offense. So I watched them all the time. And I just could never get a beat on them. Like, I was like, they just throw out the most insane plays. Like, it's almost like they just throw stuff at the wall and go, let's see if it works. <laughs> like, you think the guys will actually <laughs> run it? Do you think they'll actually run this? <laughs> yeah, they will. Okay, cool. Like, they were running things that were so uh, – you're just all over the place. Like, week 13, I'm listening to an interview from Devil, and he's like – there's someone was like, hey, can you explain your offense? And he was like, no, I can't. It's literally a mishmash of everything. He's like – we're just going to hit you every which way. Yeah. And I started to think about that, and I was like, man, number one, he's not wrong. Number two, what a great way to attack a defense. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. But all you know is this guy back here, he can throw it 100 yards. And that guy out there, he can run 100 yards faster than anyone on your team. So at any point in time, if we just get all willy-nilly, we're just going to go, hey, dude, just launch it down there. All right, good. Yeah, here we go. Ten-man pro, one guy in a route. Yeah. Who cares? Like <clears> – <throat> So, like, you talk about that kind of thing, and it's, it's, dude, it's super. It is such an advantage to have. And there's always, at any given point in the league, the last 20 years, there's like three or four guys. I mean, Russell Wilson was this for a long time was. that can, that are just cheat code guys that can just, all right, uh, whatever we run, if it's not working in the first two or three seconds, then 
uh, Josh Allen's just going to run around and do something. <laughs> That's, <laughs> like, and, like the Vikings it, don't have that, and I'm not trying to rip Kirk, but they, the Vikings have to be don't. super organized within two or three seconds or the play's over. Right. The, the Bills and a, and a few other teams, I mean, they put the Ravens in that mix. They've got the luxury, I mean, the Chiefs, of, all right, if, it, if the first yeah. three seconds are a train wreck, then, okay, we've got this other play called Josh Allen time. <laughs> Dude, well, and it's not only that, but it's it's crazy because teams like that, no matter what happens, like this last game, who did the Bills just play? The Packers. Yeah. Right. Like the first half, I'm like, I turned it off. I was like, wow, this is this is just an abomination. It's gonna get ugly quick. And then the second half, I saw that they kind of stalled out. But when you talk about these teams, number one, their defense. I mean, their defense is so good, dude. They're just, and I'm. I saw a clip. I think it was Matt Milano tech, uh, tackled. Uh, AJ Dillon from behind and they didn't call it a horse collar, but they should have. And that's like one of the things that like they do defensively, like they're just wired so differently. They'll, they don't care if there's a flag, they're going to bring you down violently. Like they're just going to come after you. And then offensively, they're the same thing. You don't know what they're going to do, but they're just going to throw a bunch of stuff at you. And if it doesn't work, they're going to go in at halftime and go, Josh, you ready? You warmed up now, buddy. Here we go. Stefan, you ready to roll, baby? Let's do it. Like yeah. three guys covering you. We don't care. Throw it, throw the ball it's it's kind of maddening at the same time because you're like dude but i know that the bills will be favorites but i want i will just say this if there was a weakness on that bills team it might be their offensive line like you they can be had and that's one of the things that brings everybody down to zero you know what i'm saying like if you if josh allen can't stand back there for 10 seconds how good can he really be I don't know. We're going to find out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, this is, and that's what's so fun. And that's some of the more, everyone's going to be like, oh, the Bills are going to kill them when they listen. I want to see it first before I believe it. Yeah. And of course, we just overlooked the commanders. We just fell into the trap right there. We just, we, we, just, it, we just disrespected. This was whiteboard material for the commanders. Look at these two guys. They just spent 10 minutes overlooking us, talking hey, about the Vikings opponent. Del Rio, you, you know. really want me to throw up some Bolton board material? I, I got some shit I can start talking right now, okay? You want to hear something, uh, Riverboat? I'll, let me see your cards. Riverboat. Show them to me. Let me see them, buddy. No, oh, I, you know what? Honestly, I like I like Washington. I like Ron. I, I don't know why. I love De- Jack Del Rio. I just like the look on his face. He's got like this evil look all the time. Like he's just thinking something. He's evil. up to something. Yeah. Always, right? And I was remember when he used to be in Oakland and he just, they had a little squad for a while and they just never could do it. But Former Viking. My aunt used to have a huge crush on him in the mid-1990s. She he's had, good looking. Uh, I could see yeah, that. She had a little Jack Del Rio card magnetized on her refrigerator for a number Sweet of years. Sweet name, too. You can't tell me that's not a cool name, Jack Del it Rio. It is a pretty cool name, yeah. Hey, you, what's your name? Jack. <laughs> Jack Del Rio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, true story. I want to see, and nobody's going to know what I'm talking about, but if you do, you're a real one. Before this game, I would love, I would pay money to see Greg Minuski and Jack Del Rio go at it for sure. You know who Greg Minuski is, right? No. Who is it? He's one of the defensive um, coaches for the Vikings. He came with Ed Donatel. He okay. Was, I got you. He was my defensive coordinator my rookie year in the Niners, and he played for Washington, I think. He was like notorious for this clip, and there was like back when Steve Sable was doing film. Remember the NFL films, which oh yeah, I used to watch with my brother every day after school. It was so exciting, and he was like sitting there one day, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, I'm just here to chew bubble gum and kick some ass, and we're all out of bubble gum." Yeah, I was like, "No way!" He really <laughs> said that, there, dude. I met him, and now I know him, and I was like, "Wow, that's incredible." I think you've stumbled into a brilliant idea here, just like like prel- a preliminary boxing match or a or a mixed martial arts fight. No, outside. Thirty minutes before the game, just run oh, wow. r- run two dudes out there and dude, see what happens. I'm telling you, they're the two toughest guys I've heard about. I'm telling you, Greg, <laughs> that's a tough, tough dude. All right, it's gonna be a Wes Phillips against uh... <laughs> KOC. Yeah, <laughs> Kevin O'Connell. Oh God, my turn versus Riverboat. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> sure needed in the parking lot. Whoever wins the fight, their team gets three points tacked out of the score Should to start the game. Let's get it. I've said this about hockey fights. I'm not I, I think it's I think it's just really really dumb and random when two guys just the game just stops and two guys just drop their gloves and so that doesn't make sense. Just seems weird. Um so if you're gonna do it, whoever wins the fight, their team gets a goal. Give it to them. All right, we're down we're down four to one. We're not gonna well, score the regular way, and so we're gonna pick a bunch, we're gonna pick three fights and we're gonna try and even this thing up. 
See what That's happens. That's the problem. You're not going to have anybody dropping their gloves. Like, dudes are going to be dropping their gloves. You're like, nope. Come nope. on. <laughs> dudes are just punching, guys. No, we're up four to one, man. I'm not fighting you. <laughs> Imagine being the guy to give up the losing goal. What are you, chicken? Oh, man. All right. Well, that's a wrap on this episode of Trenches with Boone Boy, here. Ball. Thanks for the the PhD and Dude, why is the Darius that. Smith is the NFL comeback player of the year, most likely at this point. He's probably going to have three sacks this week. Yeah, he's uh, he's on pace for like 20. So let's, uh, hey, let's keep him coming. Zedarius. Watch out, though, man. Heineke's crafty. Don't fall asleep. Like you said, don't fall for the trap. We'll talk about the Bills next week. Can't yes. Wait. yes. No, we're gonna we're gonna look ahead again next week. We're gonna we're gonna look like three weeks ahead and overlook. We're gonna create some more trap games, maybe. Probably. So uh, and if good. you guys have dumb football questions, hit us up, send them over via the Scorn Earth app or send them to me on Twitter and we can stockpile them for the rest of the year. And uh if you have any other film clips you want Boone to break down and educate us, hit us up with those too. So all right, he's Alex. Football. I'm Phil. See you guys next time on 